When he handed me that cello, I had this, dare I say, spiritual connection with the instrument. I knew it was the instrument I was supposed to play, as if I had played it in a life before. I know that sounds kind of funny, but that really was the sense, the essence I felt as I sat down at it. And I recall the very first song I played on the cello. I sat down and I just, just let that sea roar. You know, and I was like, oh, that is such a cool sound. You could feel it vibrating. And, and that, that, in turn, sort of incited this energy in me. And, and I decided, well, maybe I'll put my finger down. And so I was like, wow, that's amazing too. And then I was like, wait a minute. Wow, that sounds amazing on cello. Jaws sounds amazing. This is my instrument. I'm good. Yeah, this is definitely the instrument I want to play. Junior high is the armpit of life. I mean, it's it is it's a horrendous experience. I mean, it's like it's like packaging uh, uh, <laughs> insecurity, and everybody has to open it and eat it. I mean, it's it is a horrendous experience. Talk about identity crises. Uh, there's uh, social misgivings. There's awkwardness, uh, and so to me, an instrument can actually fill in many of those gaps especially identification. You know, identifying with a particular talent or a gift that you may have can really thwart and, and overcome a lot of those obstacles that we have as we're developing. So Parker started playing the cello and I could see that he enjoyed it. And he enjoyed it when he worked harder at it. There's other subjects that have been a struggle for him in the past and I've noticed that he really is able to apply what he's learned with music where he takes something that's unfamiliar and he can figure it out and he can listen to the teacher and he can do the assignments. And so that's translated uh, or carried over into other subjects. If you're playing an instrument, it's actually helping you. It's helping you be more successful in school, academically, in sports. Um, just learning the value of working hard at something and um, getting good scores and getting good grades. So, you know, the interesting thing is, is in wrestling, he's never wrestled before. He's played baseball, he's played basketball, um, he even tried lacrosse a little bit. He's never wrestled before, and wrestling is a brutal, physically demanding sport. And the first time I saw him wrestle, and, and he didn't do very well, I thought, this is over, he's gonna stop. Um, and I attribute him wrestling the entire season, <clears throat> partly because of the lessons learned from music. Those are two separate, very different aspects of our lives, but um, when you see him practice a hundred times, trying to get a hundred percent on a small little piece of music, you can see why he will focus so hard on wrestling, get his butt kicked, and still try, and continue to try and work hard. The music classroom was the only place in high school where I feel like I developed both sides of my brain concurrently. You think about this. My left side, my left side was being exercised with emotion and expression. At the same time, my right brain, my analytical side was being conditioned via sight reading and syncopation. You think about every aspect of music. I mean, what other classroom in a high school, in a junior high, and even an elementary school could mimic that type of training. And this is what happens, is as you develop both sides of the brain, you could see it, you could see it being, uh, just permeating every aspect of your education. And so it's as if you were to find a master switch in somebody's life and turn that brighter. All things educationally shine brighter as a result of that. And I believe that's what music can do, it can heighten it can heighten our brain's ability to learn. We could see then, we noticed as parents, that it was a like a switch clicked in his mind that if he put a little more effort into it, if he focused a little bit more, he could do better. Um, he wasn't the best student, and then all of a sudden we we're looking at his class, his grades, and he's getting all A's. And he's and the one that was really um, incredible was math. And that, that wasn't something that we saw from him in the past. 
So we, we attributed a great deal to it to him working on his music. So for a lot of these students, um, they're not really worried about um, their schoolwork or doing well in any activity or any sports. Some of them are thinking, well, where am I going to eat next? Where am I going to sleep tonight? Because we have a lot of homeless students actually too. And so giving them this opportunity um, is really meaningful for me and for them because they are able to play music when they otherwise would not be able to. And Legacy Music Alliance has been really great for us because they help give us those funds that we're able to fix the instruments that we have and keep them in working order because naturally it's a junior high, things are going to break and that's just kind of what happens. And so uh, with them in the picture, Legacy Music Alliance, we're able to fix the things that we have and keep them nice and working order. My classroom is like a safe haven for them so that they are able to experience a little bit more joy than they otherwise probably would not have if they were not here. And it's not just rewarding for them, it's also rewarding for me as well. And I've always wanted to be a teacher. And so this is my dream job. I've always wanted to teach junior high music and I got what I wanted and hopefully they did too. So we see, we see a gap that needs to be filled here, and that is, uh, of course, there's the misunderstanding of how valuable a music program is, but there's also a tremendous funding issue. And uh, that funding issue isn't just simply numbers. It translates into a lack of hardware, I guess you could say. Now, nobody, very few people would question needing a computer in a computer lab. But what about an instrument in an instrument lab, which is the orchestra room? I think we need to address that concern with a lot more intensity. And, and that's why I appreciate and I, and I respect and love what Legacy Music Alliance is doing, because they're stepping in and recognizing that gap and being brave enough to stand up and say, look, this is a need and we need your help to address this need. Students will walk into orchestra and if they say, I wanna play the violin, we don't have any, that's it. I don't know if they'll ever come back. There's a good chance they won't. They walk into orchestra, I want to play cello. I just happen to have one for you. They sit down, their life is changed from that moment on. And so if we miss out on that opportunity to hand an instrument to a child, we've missed out on a life-changing experience that can enrich a child's life greatly. And who would ever argue against that? It's not the fault of any single one person, but um, because of the situations, the unique situations of all these students, um, they need to have something besides the things that have been handed to them in their homes and, you know, their cards that have been dealt are not always the best. And so I want to give them something that they would not otherwise have had because music has made that difference in my life and they deserve to have the same thing that I did. Hi, this is Stephen Sharp Nelson of The Piano Guys, inviting you to keep music alive in our Utah schools. For the sake of our children's future, donate $10 to the Legacy Music Alliance. Where does that money go? It goes directly to fund music education and it puts instruments just like this one into our children's hands. Make an impact. Join us. Join Legacy Music Alliance.